Nobody is immune to falling. There is no one single person who could claim that he or she hadn't made choices in life that led to falling down, feeling hurt, lost, misunderstood, disoriented, wrong choice of school, first boyfriend, or simply moving in with a crazy roommate. The tricky thing is that falling down does not occur as a single event in our lifetime. It rather crawls through our life as an unpredictable movement, a dissonant rhythm, a flow, a frequency. So this is what connects us also here, sitting in this room. We all share this experience of falling down, and this is what makes us close to each other. So this can happen in the whole life period of yours, as it happened to the boy in this picture. He didn't speak until he was four. At school, he was receiving poor grades, and one day a teacher said to him, you will never amount to anything, Albert. And yet he became the most famous scientist of the 20th century. Or it may accompany your entrepreneurial trials. Henry Ford's first two automotive companies failed big time, and yet he became the one who revolutionized the whole world economy by introducing the mass production, giving decent salaries to workers, and boosting the consumer market. Or it may happen, which is in particularly hurtful, as an answer to your creative work, as it happened to J.K. Rowling. Her manuscript for Harry Potter was turned down by 12 publishers. I wonder how they feel today, knowing that the brand is worth $15 billion. So we said, falling down is the part that connects us all in this hall, and it connects us as well with the ones that succeeded on the world scales. So what is that turns the lows into the highs? What creates the energy needed that is going to catapult us back again in the high? While holding these questions, a model evoked inside of me, and I titled it, Two Parachutes and a Trampoline for Falling Up two parachutes that are going to mitigate our landing more softly and a trampoline that is going to set us off again. So let's look at the first parachute. That one is being knowing your purpose. If I would ask you how many of you know what is your purpose in life? So what is the answer to the big why? How many of you could fire the answer? One, two, perhaps ten of you? Obviously, this topic doesn't come as a light one. So let's better break it down into some helpful question. The first one to address is, what am I being passionate about? So what is the reason that drives my will to wake up in the morning with a smile on my face? What is that raises the hair on my skin? Is it the fact that I'm going to achieve something today? Or is it the support I can provide to somebody? Or is it perhaps the connection I can make today? 
Our passions are in close relation to our motivational drives. So knowing what they are at its source creates a partial answer to our purpose. The second question is, what are my potentials? So what am I good at? What am I unbeatably best at? Is it writing, analyzing, organizing, creating? Is it doing something with my hands, with my head, or with my heart? Our potentials may constitute the full basket of our knowledge, of our experience, interests, our personality, talents. In the end of the day, it is the potentials that create our uniqueness and our unique magic, not only for ourselves, but the one that we can also share with the others. So in order not to waste our passions and our potentials, we need to address yet another question, and that one is, what does the world need? So where and how can I put my passions and my potentials into action? Without the answer to this question, we can remain separate from the opportunity to manifest ourselves into the world. And the world remains robbed for our uniqueness and our magic. When putting the answers of these three questions of, into relation to each other, a small space emerges in between. And it is exactly from this place from which our purpose is evoked. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> there is this fairly old lady. She must be close to 90 years old in the village where I live. Each morning, she would go by bicycle to the nearby field where she is growing the crops and vegetables that she would be then selling on the Saturday's local market. Obviously, she doesn't have to do that anymore for living. So one day, I stopped by when she was driving a bicycle, with, which is really a life-threatening act in a foggy morning, to ask her what keeps her going. And she answered to me in a blink of an eye. She said to me, because you need to have fresh vegetables for your pot. Can you feel? It is really not about creating a kind of a purpose for your career. It has nothing to do with the economical benefits. It really is about the life calling. It is about making sense out of your life. It is about creating an internal feeling of being on a mission that is going to keep you going until you are 90 or 100. Let's look at the second parachute. That one is having an ambition. Now, to have an ambition is something quite different from being ambitious. I was always amazed by the ones who knew at any point of their life what they want to achieve, where they want to be in five years from now, in which role do they see themselves in 10 years from now, you know, the nerds. To be ambitious is different in the following sense. So, being ambitious is in fact a personality trait, and it is of the kind that comes to earth in a limited edition. Whereas to have an ambition is really not reserved just to a certain percentage of world's population. 
anybody can have an ambition. I, for example, still have no clue where I want to be or where I will be in five years from now. But nevertheless, I do have an ambition. And this is to contribute to emergence of purposeful leadership that is going to create good future for the generations to follow. And this is what gives me an internal sense of direction. And it gives me even more than that, which is a sense of contributing to a higher cause. And I have absolutely no issue with that, that I am not knowing what's going to happen. It makes me feel as if I'm creating the space for the opportunities I'm simply not being aware of. And it's exciting. So knowing your purpose and having an ambition still doesn't quite provide for the guarantee that we won't fall again and again, right? So we need to ask ourselves, what is the place or the dimension in which we fall into? This place is called the unknown. This is the place of ultimate discomfort, uncertainty, a place of many questions and very few answers. A place in which our breath becomes heavier, our emotions tensed, and our logic totally chaotic. So where the hell is a way out? How do we get out of here? Where is the trampoline that is going to set us off again? Well, it lies exactly in the heart of the unknown. And it is called embracing the unknown by simply becoming aware and accept. By taking the situation as a gift for reflection and for starting to see the things for which you were blind to before. Do use all the sources of knowings and intelligence that you have at your disposal. It's not just about the rational mind. Listen to your emotions. Listen to your body. Listen to the intelligence of your heart, to the intelligence of your guts, of your instincts, of all the senses we are having on our disposal. And use the rational mind only at its best, which is not for rolling in the deep and analyzing why and how did it happen and why to me, not for blaming, judging, use it only for the creation of the insights from the learnings that the life wants us to learn and use them as the building blocks, as the stepping stones that are going to help you up into high again. The thing is that what differentiates the ones that raise up again from the fallen ones, their capability to sustain the unknown, to explore into unknown, to trust the unknown, to love the unknown. Having introduced the model, let's, let's test it on a live example. And this live example I'm giving you is an example of a transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly. So a caterpillar may not appear as the most glamorous or inspired creature. It doesn't do much more than it crawls in the grass, stuffs itself with green leaves all days long, until one day 
it hangs itself upside down from a twig or a leaf, spins itself, and forms a cocoon. Now, what's going on inside of this cocoon is a true unknown, a true chaos. And the nature has this really wondrous capability of turning chaos into a new order. Whenever and wherever a chaos appears, sooner or later, new patterns are going to emerge. And that's exactly what's going on inside of the cocoon. So first, the caterpillar literally digests itself into a soupy mess. Yet, in few days, small colonies of cells start to form. And these colonies are scientifically called imaginal disks. So even the science is acknowledging how important it is to have imagination, to have a dream, to have an aspiration of what you want to be. And so one colony of cells form an image of seeing, and they start transformation into the eyes of the butterfly. Another colony of cells has a dream of flying, and they start the creation of the wings. And yet another colony is dreaming about beautiful, vivid colors, and they start the creation of that. Yet, it is only until these colonies are able to create a collective vision that a true metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly actually can happen. And where is the purpose? Well, from the butterfly's perspective, we could say that the purpose is to just simply play a particular role within the ecosystem. If we view on it from a human perspective, we can allow to ourselves to be a little bit more poetic and say that the purpose of a butterfly is to welcome spring and to bring the smile on our faces. To sum up, the unknown is the ultimate place in which you can reinvent yourself. Take a conscious pause to reflect on your life, to readdress your purpose, to revisit your ambition, to bubble up your potentials that were perhaps hidden until today, and also to open up the space for other ambitions to come in and to create a collective power for a collective vision to happen. The unknown is the place from which the new you can be born into the world, just the same as it is happening in the wondrous transformational process of a caterpillar into a butterfly. Fly high, butterflies. <laughs>